We all have them. We use them every day, but for a variety of reasons we don't allow most of them in our classrooms. Largely because we haven't been able to figure out how or why a cell phone can be used for a learning tool, the choice has been to ban them. While this is an understandable response in many cases, educators are wondering how to use these powerful tools to help engage students and more importantly, help them learn. Distraction, which it is, I see every day, and it goes off, and it's another calling, or it's so and so. Do you have cell phones right now? Yes, I'm just wondering. You do? Yeah. yeah. I've had them for several years. I'm supposed to bring them to school, but you know, after the uh, occurrences that mm -hmm. have happened in the United States, um, just parents feel much better having that imme immediate uh, response if they need to get a hold of them. been able to figure out how or why a cell phone can be used for a learning tool, the choice has been to ban them. Teacher took my phone and he literally read the messages. Back. The district says if a student is caught using a cell phone during school time, it is confiscated. They'll just take it and look through like everything on it. Sexting or sending sexually explicit text messages. The connection is instant and might feel oh so private, but racy photos often end up costing the teens who send them more than they might expect. You know, not only do girls do it, boys do it too. And later in life, it can come back to haunt. However private you think some communication is, there is no way you can prevent that other person from sending that. I don't, I won't say it should be banned, you know, because people need like case emergencies. But 
you should not be allowed to be taxing them. But if you tax them, you should money. have them because like, people actually have family. For adults, it's more like a foreign language, but for teens, texting is more like a second language. Either way, abbreviations like LOL and BRB may one day change the way your child learns the English language. use numbers for letters, spell words incorrectly, even make up their own abbreviated form of the English language. Just like random words that hopefully my friends can figure it out. Critics say text messaging is dumbing down the language, but some teachers say it's just another example of how fluid the English language is. I think the English language is getting compressed all the time anyway. Yeah, because they're using a text language, which, I mean, I text and we already know that if you have the first and last word, you know, letters of a word. From you texting someone during class, you're, you're usually not going to miss, like, the important things that you need to know, like little notes that they write on the board or whatever, so. Yeah. I think it's like, I'd rather be a student texting in class than be a student not going to class at all. It's giving them the opportunity to use a tool that they're familiar with to enhance their learning. And the learning doesn't end in the classroom. Um, you can be sitting in the middle of a paddock and just want to have a learn, so you get out your cell phone, you um, text um, a message, they send a message back to you and you can save that on your phone and look at, look at it whenever you want. Not only is there a clear sense of student-centered learning, but also we see the teacher themselves as a learner, and their students understand they are learning together. As Gord Taylor says, the novelty of the phone will quickly wear off, so the focus must not be on the tool itself, but on learning. As we witness the explosion of new tools and technologies, teachers must be prepared to explore and adapt to include these opportunities for learning. texting and oh. laptops in the classroom in absolutely the classroom. I love them I always use mine all the time <laughs> texting in the info you gotta do it mm -hmm.